Welcome to October's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is maximize distance to closest person. In the age of COVID, it's a pretty pertinent question. You are given an array representing a row of seats where seats I equaling one represents a person sitting in the i seat. Seats I equaling zero represents that that seat is empty. Now there is at least one empty seat and at least one, one person sitting. And Alex wants to sit in the seat such that the distance between him and the closest person or persons to him is maximized. Return that maximum distance. So if we had this example here, we can see there are people seated at one, four, and six, or I'm sorry, zero, four, and six. Uh, sitting at seat two is gonna give us the maximum distance of two between uh, this person here and this person here, right? So that would be the answer. So how will we go about solving this? Well, the very first kind of thought might be to go with some sort of DP solution. And we'll go through that, that totally works. Um, Let's see how we would do that for this example. Uh, say that we had this list. Say we create like a DP array of all zeros at first. And this DP array is gonna store the maximum distance um, between some person and a populated seat, a seated, a seated seat. So maybe we start with like a distance of zero here. And if we see that our seat is seated, we can reset our distance to zero. And if it's not, then we'll increase our distance by one and we will populate this DP array to say, okay, the maximum distance from the person to our left is one. Now the next is also zero, so we increase our uh, distance to two and we'll update that and so on and so forth. Uh, once we see that it is seated, we will reset our distance uh, and we'll continue this algorithm, which will give us a DP array looking like this. So what this kind of tells us is what's the maximum distance from the leftmost person, right? But that's not enough. Obviously, if we return the maximum of this DP array, we get three, but the answer is two. So we actually have to go the other way as well. Um, and really, we can just follow the same algorithm here. What we'll do is start with distance of zero. If it's populated, we'll reset it, zero. Uh, and if it's not, we will increase it to one. And what we can do is just take the minimum of what we calculate and the previous DP array. So here we'll say one, what's the minimum between these two? It's one, so we'll keep one here. Here, two, it's the same, so it doesn't matter. Here, we calculate three, well, the minimum before was one, so we'll have to update that to one. So now this DP array contains the maximum distance on both sides, and we can just return the max here. There is one caveat though, what if it was looking at something like this? Well, if this was to occur, uh, the, DP array would end up looking something like, first it would calculate from the leftmost side, it would look like one, two, three, four. So it looks good now, but when we go backwards, we take the minimum between these two. So we'd say one, minimum two, and we say three, well, it's the minimum, this is two. Uh, and what's the minimum here? Between four and one, it's, it's one. So it would look something like this, and that's not right, right? Because basically we have to, this kind of assumes that there's a person sitting here, uh, but there's not. So how could we account for that? Well, we'd have to have some sort of Boolean or some sort of way to indicate to us that uh, we need to reset this distance. Otherwise, don't update it. So we'll have to account for that in our algorithm. All right, so how could we do that? Let's start by saying, uh, we'll initialize our n to the length of seats. Next, we'll create our DP array of all zeros times the length of seats. Now we need to first initialize our distance, but we're gonna start with negative one here. And what this will allow us to do is indicate to us whether we've seen a seated seat before yet. And if we haven't, uh, we don't quite wanna do the same thing. So for i in range of n, we'll say, look, if not seats.i, okay, and distance, does not equal negative one, then we will update it. We'll say, okay, distance, make it equal to uh, plus equal one, and we'll update our DP array to equal the distance here. And notice at this point, we don't need to take the minimum between the two because we're just doing it the first time. Uh, otherwise, else, if, um, else we will update our distance to equal zero, and this indicates to us yeah, a seat was populated and now we've found one. Okay, otherwise we don't do anything else. So we've done our first pass, now let's go our second pass. We'll do the same thing, but we'll move backwards. 
and we will pretty much do the same thing except we will take the minimum between this distance and our DP array. Once that's finished, we can just return the max of our DP. So let's give it a shot here. Uh, this should return to us two and it does. Let's submit that. And I believe there's one thing I didn't account for. Yeah, so one of the things that happens is uh, if we haven't touched this DP array and we keep it at zero, then it actually ends up just storing that zero as the as the minimum. So that's a problem. Uh, well, one way easy, it's kind of easy way to take care of that is just say, look, if DP I, if it equals zero, just take whatever we calculate here to equal distance. Otherwise, take the minimum because that way uh, it accounts for this kind of weird edge case. Okay, so let's go ahead and submit this. And that takes care of it. There we go, accepted. So this is an O of N solution, but we also use O of N space. So can we do better than this? Yeah, and there are a couple approaches. Uh, there was one using two pointers and there was another one using a, a group by, but I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm going to try to use some sort of greedy method here. And what I'll do is first, again, initialize n and we're going to have something called max gap equaling well first zero this will be well yeah the max gap that we can find as well as some sort of start and we'll initialize that first with negative one so for i in range of n the very first thing we want to check is if the seat is populated um, then we want to, um, I guess, increase our pointer to equal, or I'm sorry, not increase it. We want to make it equal to i. So if we've seen some, if we've already seen one before, um, well, I should say, if we haven't seen a populated C before, so if start is equal to negative one, that means the max gap at this point is just whatever the length is, right? So if we haven't seen anything before, then we're just going to store our max gap to equal i. Otherwise, we have seen something. So if that's the case, we'll have to take the max between the max gap that we've calculated so far. And what we'll do is say, hey, take our i and subtract it by the start that we've stored from our last populated one. And one thing that we actually need to account for here is because we have to account for like both sides, we're actually gonna have to divide this by two. Take our i minus start and we'll divide it by two. And that's gonna guarantee to us that uh, if the other side was, um, you know, account for that left side of the person that's seated. Uh, but one thing to note, if our seats look something like, I don't know, um, let's say it was populated, populated, but it was all zeros afterwards, well, this wouldn't work because this, again, kind of assumes that there's somebody sitting eventually at the right side. So to take care of that, we'll just say, OK, uh, once we take this, we'll just take the max of the max gap as well as the n minus 1 minus the start, which is the very last seated person that we've seen. So. There you go. After that, we can just return our max gap. And this should also work. There we go, accepted. So this is better, it's O of N, and it would use constant space. All right, so that's it. I'm just gonna end it here. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.